Okay, we're on the home stretch in this chapter. We've actually hinted at all three of these rules, but we'd like to codify them. A fellow named Kirchhoff came up with these rules. And um, the junction rule. We've actually used it several times in discussing these principles, so this shouldn't come as much of a surprise. Define a junction and state the junction rule. What's a junction? Here's an example of a junction. A junction is a place where three or more wires join. Okay, you can't have two wires coming together. That's not really a junction. Uh, or at least we don't call it that uh, in physics. That's just equivalent to one wire going straight through. But a junction, you have to one, two, three, or more wires coming through. And the junction rule states that the total current directed into a junction must equal the total current directed out. Total current in is total current out. Well, in this particular case, what current goes into the junction? 7 amps. What's the total current out? 2 amps plus 5 amps. Does 2 plus 5 add up to 7? Yes, they do. So the current in is 7 amps is the current out is um, 2 amps plus 5 amps. And this is uh, similar to the example we did earlier, I1 equals I2 plus I3. Okay, that's a junction rule. What about the loop rule? A loop is a closed path that starts and ends at the same place in a circuit. So, here's a single loop circuit. So if I say I'm going to start here and I'm going to go around this circuit clockwise, um, I'm going to go all the way around the circuit and come back to the same point, then that is a loop. Closed path that starts and ends at the same place. The loop rule states that the sum of all changes in the potential in going around a closed loop is zero. The potential falls when passing through a resistor in the direction of the current and may rise or fall when passing through a battery. Let's apply the loop rule to this uh, circuit. The loop rule is, by the way, a statement of conservation of energy. Well, if I'm going to start here and start adding up the changes in the electric potential, then I'm going to start here. How much does the potential change in going from here to here? And you say, well, not at all, because we're talking about a highly conducting wire. Potential stays the same. The potential is the same all the way along here. Same, 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 same. What about we get to the um, resistor now? Uh, it has a 10 volt potential difference between the two terminals. This term, this side of the resistor is, is labeled plus, and this side is labeled minus. And the reason is the current is going through this way. So if you think about this as a waterfall, this would be the high side of the waterfall. This would be the low side of the waterfall. So the potential, what's going to happen as I cross this resistor from the high side to the low side, the potential is going to go down. The electric potential will go down by 10 volts. So there's my change in potential in dropping uh, off that waterfall. Then I come over to here, the potential doesn't change all the way along here, but does change as I cross this resistor, and it's going to change by 2 volts, and it's going to go down. And then I'm continuing along this path, potential is not changing now, the electric potential or the voltage. And now we get to here. Now I'm going to go from the negative side of the battery to the positive side. And in chapter 18, we talked about the, how the potential changes depending on the charge. And if you go from positive to negative, then you're going to increase the potential. So this would be like the 0 volt side of the battery, and this would be the 12 volt side of the battery. It's the positive side. So the voltage is going to go up plus 12 volts. Now, what does this rule say? It says that the sum 
of all changes in the potential and going around a closed loop is zero. It's not constant, it's not anything else, it's zero. So I've added up the change, the decrease in potential of 10 volts here, decrease in potential of two volts here, and then the increase in potential here of the battery. Minus 10, minus two, plus 12, what's that supposed to equal? Zero. Sum of all the changes is zero. Well, is that a true statement? Well, sure enough, minus 10 minus 2 is minus 12, plus 12 gives 0, equals 0. And this should be a very satisfying result. 0 should definitely equal 0. Determine this, the current in the circuit. This is an example. Let's see if we can find the current in the circuit. Um, I've got a battery here. I've got a battery here. And I am going to use the uh, loop rule to try and determine the current in the circuit. Now I'm going to need the voltage drop across this resistor, but I don't know it yet. But I do know that the voltage drop across this resistor is the current through the resistor, I, times the resistance itself, R. Well, I is whatever it is. I don't know what it is yet. But R, I do know. It's 12 ohms. So that's the voltage drop across that resistor. Same thing over here. Voltage drop across this resistor is the current. Is the current through this resistor the same as the current through that resistor? You say, yeah, sure enough, they're in series, same current, times 6. Um, okay, so in this case, <laughs> um, we know the resistance here, but we know, oh, this is not a resistor. <laughs> My bad. This is a battery. My bad. I meant to do this one. So this now, we need to, we've got the resistance, 8 ohms. We've got the current is I. It has to be the same. This is a battery. So V equals IR is uh, the current times the resistance, 8 ohms. And that'll be the voltage drop across that resistor. All right, let's add up all the changes in the voltage as we go around a clockwise loop through this circuit. Let's start here. I'm going to start here, and I'm going to end here. Let's add up all the changes in potential. How much does the potential change as I go from here to here? Not at all. How much does it change as I go across the resistor? Well, I'm going across the resistor in the direction of the current, and therefore the potential drops by I times 12 ohms. That's this, potent this voltage across that resistor. Okay, I'm coming to this battery. Now, I'm coming along here and I want to know what happens to the voltage as I cross from the positive terminal of the battery to the negative terminal of the battery. Well, where's the potential higher? Where's the voltage higher? Well, it's higher on the, on the plus side than it is on the minus side. So as I go from the left to the right side of this battery, the voltage is going to drop, not increase. Okay, that's as I pass from here to here. Now I'm coming along here, no changes in potential here. Then I get to here. Well, I'm crossing this resistor in the direction of the current. It's like going over a waterfall. The height or the elevation, which represents the voltage, is going to drop by this amount. Minus I times 8 ohms. Okay, I've gotten to here now. Now, to finish my circuit, I have to get across this battery. Now this one, I'm going to have to go from the right side of the battery to the left side. Right to left, I'm going from negative to positive. What happens to the voltage? It increases by 24 volts. Now I'm back to where I started again. Um, What's this equal to? 
The loop rule says that the sum of all the changes in the potential as you go around a closed loop must be zero. Happy day. Can we solve this equation for i? Yeah, we sure can. No problem. Um, we got a 24 here. Got a 6 here. 24 minus 6 is our old friend 18. And let's see where we have some space. So that'll give me 18 volts. I'm going to do it right here. So it doesn't like. That takes care of this term and this term. And then I've got i times 8, the minus i times 8, minus i times 12. So that will be minus i times 8 plus 12 is 20, if we combine those two terms. And that's supposed to equal 0. And I've just 8 plus 12 here is 20, and both of them had a minus sign, so that's what I end up with here. So now finally, we can solve for the current by taking this term, the i times 20, over to the right side of the equation, then dividing by 20, and the current therefore is 18 volts over 20 ohms. Nine amps. That's how you do those problems. Define a branch. We've talked about these two. What's a branch of the circuit? <clears throat> a branch is a path between two junctions. Well, what's a junction? Let's remind ourselves of a junction. A junction is where how many or more wires come together? Three. So this would be an example of a junction. And a branch is a path between two junctions. There's another junction over here. And those are the only two junctions in this circuit. Well, what about this one here? Is that a junction? No, only two wires. Has to be three or more. So junctions here at these two points. What the branch rule says is that um, a branch is a path between two junctions. Well, here's one possible path between those two junctions. We're going to call that branch H, and we're going to give it a current I sub H. And the claim here is that the current is the same at every point along a branch. So what this is saying here is that the current has to be the same here, as it is here. We well, already know that. You know that you're not going to lose any current as you pass through that resistor. Uh, here's another branch. From here to here, let's call that branch B, and it has current IB in it. And then we have another, a third branch, like this IA. And the current is going to be the same everywhere along that branch. That's the important thing. The current through that battery is the same as the current through this resistor. And that's the branch rule. So Kirchhoff's rules, these three rules that we've talked about here, together with uh, high, highly powerful numerical equation solvers, are, are used to design integrated circuits in electronic devices. Uh, today I looked up the um, what the CPU or the pr central processing unit is for a uh, the newest MacBook Pro 15-inch computer. These uh, processors are made uh, by Intel, and uh, it's a Skylake Core i7 four-core processor. It has 20 billion transistors in it. We're not going to do much with uh, transistors in this course, uh, but it's another circuit element that's like a resistor or a capacitor, um, and there's 20 billion of them, along with similar numbers of resistors and capacitors. Normally these, these integrated circuit chips, so-called, uh, they're 
their size or the, the amount of um, material in them is normally measured by the number of transistors rather than the number of resistors or capacitors. But um, you'll see them inside your computer case. They look like this. It has a, I mean, they might be about this size or so, an inch or two. A lot of uh, integrated circuit components um, and, and wiring that come, come to them. But about two billion transistors. Just amazing how much is fit. Uh, two billion components plus resistors and capacitors, um, inductors, etc. Actually, inductors normally would be outside. We'll talk about inductors as well. But just incredible what the electronics of the day has produced. Um, in the lab, you will use an ammeter um, to measure currents in a circuit. And this is just a device. This is a handheld ammeter. You, some of you have them. Um, and in order to measure the current in the circus, circuit, then the current in the circuit has to pass through that ammeter. And then you measure out a, um, a current in amps. <coughs> Uh, to measure a voltage between two points in a circuit, you connect a voltmeter between those two points. And you'll be doing that also in lab. It won't be handheld. There's a machine that's involved in the lab that does this for you. But the, you can measure the, the voltage between point A and point B using a voltmeter. <clears throat> 